I think I think I'll go where he goes. <laughs> No, we've managed so far on our adaptive board. Building a special community. One more time. So, quick uh, safety information at the start. If you would please remain in your seats with your seatbelts fastened while the coach is moving, that would be fantastic. Don't stand up and walk back and forward while we are driving. If Colin needs to brake all of a sudden, you will then probably, possibly fall over and bash your head. And that's not what we want to do. Okay? However, for minor bumps and bruises, we do have a first aid kit on board. It's in the first compartment on the left hand side above the first seat row. There's a fire extinguisher on board as well, which is behind Colin's seat. Our main entrance is here in the front on the left, and there's an emergency exit in the rear of the coach. You can use that in case of an emergency, of course, but otherwise only use it if Colin opens the door. Don't try and open it yourself, because it depends on the road situation. There's various red hammers for smashing the windows. You might want to make yourselves familiar with the nearest one. Um, don't use them if you feel too hot. Uh, we have that topic, let me know. And we get it changed in a cheaper way for us. Okay? Good. So that's the safety briefing done. And I come to the more interesting part. You have arrived here on the main island of Orkney, and it's called Mainland. Just to keep it simple, Mainland for Main Island. And this is our capital city, Kirkwall. I'm quite sure some of you have already had a walk through our shopping street here in Kirkwall. Capital Kirkwall, the Royal Borough of Kirkwall. Roughly 8,500 people live here. Maybe slightly more now, maybe just under 9,000. There's a total of people in Orkney of 22,500. Two thirds of them live on the main island, and the rest is just living on the outer islands. There is a total of 70 islands in Orkney, but only 20 are permanently inhabited. The rest of them are some, maybe just grazing land or some rocks that stick out of the sea. We're driving past some of our restaurants. You see, we've got a Chinese restaurant, we've got an Indian restaurant, and we do have an Italian restaurant. That's it. There's a couple of fish and chip shops, and if you look up to your right now, you will see our supermarket alley. We've got a Tesco, and we've got a Lidl, and that's it. So it's a very small community up here, and that's the only large supermarkets here. And if you've walked through the shopping street, you've probably realized there's a few lovely little cafes, a few souvenir shops, one shoe shop, one clothes shop for men. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so more or less, not a lot going on here. On your left side, the building, that's the Roman Catholic Church, St. Magnus Cathedral on the opposite. If you've visited our beautiful cathedral, does not belong to a specific religion thing. A cathedral that is owned by the people who live around it. Maintain, main, main, maintained by the Orkney Islands Council. The cathedral was built in 1137, dedicated to St. Magnus, and it took 300 years to construct it. And if you visited in the morning, you would have seen a red and yellow sandstone local sandstone used for constructing this beautiful cathedral. So this means there is a service every Sunday, a Church of Scotland service, but it does not really matter what religion you believe in. You can get married in the church, you can have a ceremony in the church, and they're also doing funerals, uh, services for funerals, no matter what religion you believe in. Very unique, fantastic thing. Building on your right hand side now, 
coming up the round shaped building, the white one. That's our uh, small hospital, constructed in 2019. It was actually when it was finished, just prior to the COVID pandemic. Unfortunately, they missed out constructing a um, intensive care unit, so there's no ICU here. They do have a maternity ward. There's a huge dental centre for all sorts of dental operations. There's accidents and emergency. You might want to bear in mind it's only open Monday to Friday. And there's also um, 60 single bedrooms in this hospital. So it's a basic hospital. Um, there's no specialists here for that. For, um, Ortho, there's no orthopedic surgeon, for example, there's no cardiologist here, there's no children's doctor here. So these specialists come up to Orkney every two weeks uh, for post-operative checks, but hip replacement or heart surgery is not performed up here. So our patients are shipped off the island, more or less. So you are flown off the island either with a scheduled flight or with an ambulance check, if it's urgent. But still a very important building here in Orkney, our little Balfa Hospital. I would like to draw your attention over onto the left, maybe. If you look up on the horizon, roughly at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, you see two pagoda-style towers up there. This is Highland Park Whiskey Distillery, the most northerly whiskey distillery in Scotland. And we're making fantastic single malt whiskey, a very smoked, peaty flavoured whisky. Uniquely produced here in Orkney with drinking water from Orkney with peat garden <coughs> from the shoreline alongside Scarborough Flow. The only thing that's not 100% from Orkney is the barley that's used here because barley grows in Orkney but only a winter crop, a feeding barley for animals and the majority of the barley comes from the Scottish border. But other than that, everything is local and rather special. So when they dry the barley after the malting process, they dry it. Uh, 11 o'clock you can see a plane taking off just now, just took off at Kirkwall Airport. It's way up high now. We've got a little airport outside Kirkwall with scheduled flights from here, from Kirkwall National Airport to Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Inverness and up to Sambra. And in the summer months we've got one plane taking off from Kirkwall International Airport to Bergen. So we are International Airport just for a few months over the summer with a direct flight to Norway. We all, these flights are performed with Saab aircrafts. There's an ATR as well here now, two of them. I think Logan Air owns a few of them. Majority are Saab aircrafts and there's also two smaller planes. Um, they are islanders. There's two here, eight seats and nine seats, but these tiny planes are our island hoppers. So they just fly in between that flow. You've seen two oil rigs and an accommodation. There is a crude oil coming in from the North Sea in, pardon me, in pipelines. And they go to the island of Flotta. And there's also big container ships coming in, delivering oil and taking oil away from here. The island of Flotter is one of the South Isles here in Orkney. It's a small island. 50 people live on the island. There are roughly 150 commute there every day for work. They're storing the crude oil there. They're cleaning it of salt and water. And they also split some uh, gas off it. But they're not refining it. So it's just a storing area and it gets transported away. Sometimes we see ship-to-ship reform defense and all other defense partners were not really paying too much attention. Um, Gunther Pring with his U-47 came in here. He fired three sets of torpedoes aimed at HMS Royal Oak. The first torpedo missed the ship. We have the chance to cut peat, but modern houses tend to use kerosene heating oil for heating anyway. But still the peat would be a cheap way of heating your house because cutting peat at the peat bank, if you do have the rights on your title deeds, is free. 
I'm looking closely on the lathe. There's something going on here with sheep. If you look out, that's Sean Carsuta with his family, a very famous local lad, because he's on a TV program as well, showing off his sheep. Oh, look, there's two tiny lambs on the right side. 122, 100, and what's the number? I, did, I missed it. Oh, how cute. Some very small ones, loads and loads of sheep on the right. So they've just constructed the hurdles here earlier on. They're maybe, they're maybe tagging them or something, I assume. Probably tagging the little ones to get these earrings put in their ears with numbers on it. Unfortunately, ready for the market. Poor things. At this time of year, there is roughly 150,000 sheep in Orkney and around 100,000 cattle. Compared to humans, 22,500, we can't eat all the lamb chops and pork and beef steaks ourselves. I said pork, there's a few pigs in Orkney as well, but not on a big scale. So the bigger scale is cattle and sheep. They are bred here over the summer months and then they get auctioned off lamb just when they're about probably six, seven months old and cows when they're slightly older. Yeah, still scabber floor on your left and at roughly um, 11 o'clock if you look out you see a wind turbine on an island over there on the left side and a small chimney as well beside it on the left. This is the island of Flotta and that's where the crude oil comes in from the North Sea. And closer to the road on your left you've got a brown and a white pony. These are highland ponies. Slightly larger than the Shetland ones, very good natured. Lovely ponies, bred here for pony riding. They used to be working ponies, but not any longer. We've got tractors and plows working with machinery now. No longer horsepower needed from a single horse. There's more down on the left in the field, but they're really far away. I can't see them anymore now. Is the temperature okay for you? Yeah, it was maybe a bit chilly early on. I don't want to make it too warm because I don't want to put you to sleep, all of you, in the bus, if it gets too warm and comfy. <laughs> so I'm just checking. <laughs> checking if you're still listening. <laughs> right, we, um, village of Orpha. They're extremely lucky here. They've got two pubs. Not every parish in Orkney has got two pubs or for us. But there's also a primary school. There's a total of 16 primary schools in Orkney. One of them is here and you see there's a 20 mile per hour light flashing. So we need to drive a little bit slower here. And the primary school is here on your right side. It's the building with the yellow and brown roof. Parents are waiting to collect their kids. Normally school finishes at half past three. Oh, there we go. It's half past three. <laughs> um, primary school and the nursery joined them, and you probably read all for community school. So you might wonder what does that mean, all for community school? Community school means there's a community centre joined them, and that's used, um, as it says, by the community, especially over the winter months. They are playing uh, whist here, they are playing darts, they are playing pool, um, or snooker, rather. They are playing, so it's a, it's a centre where various different things happen during the week, during the winter months, and it is very important for locals. We've got very short days over the winter, dark, dark, long nights. Our shortest days, in fact, are only six hours long. So once it gets dark at around half past three, four o'clock, it's jet black dark, and it only gets daylight again at nine o'clock. You do have your days where you just sit at home and watch TV, but you can't do that all winter long, or you just get really, really lonely, and you can also get quite depressed. So it is important to find yourself a hobby and to go out and meet people. That's really important, or you can get quite depressed in Orkney. Not only because you're lonely, but also because of a lack of daylight. That's another factor. So our GPs here in Orkney, actually recommend uh, that you take a 
certain dose of vitamin D over the winter months to make up for the lack of daylight. And it does really make a difference. So it really, really helps and lifts your mood a bit, this vitamin D tablets. And the other option, of course, is to go out in one of the community centers and meet people. So you might now wonder what happens if you're older, you're not driving yourself any longer. We have a solution for that as well. We've got a community bus. And that's a blue bus, and they pick up uh, people. There's various of them in our name. They pick up people from the houses, take them to the community centers, and bring them back home afterwards. So it's really a fantastic system working here. You just need to book your seats. So a great thing uh, put on here in Orkney over the winter months. so good with cars. I normally go, when my husband says to me, what car was it? I guess the answer, <laughs> a red one. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> Unfortunately me. No, well, I mean, I do know it a little bit, but old timers, that's not my... Here comes another one, a blue one. <laughs> Call it, what is it? You will know. Yeah, it's a triumph. A what? Triumph. Triumph. A triumph. Oh, okay. Interesting. It was light blue. <laughs> and it didn't have a roof. A black roof. Oh. Heard you. That's a good safe answer. Another one? No, that's a normal one. That's a normal white car. A white one. <laughs> Oh, I might be able to tell what it is if it comes oh. closer. That's a forward, yes. But it's got the label on the front as well. What are they doing? Island something written on it. And they are on a mission. Right, um, distracting me because I'm supposed to tell you about Scapa Flow on your left side. Um, this area is called Houghton Bay and we've got a, a pier down there. And ships are leaving here, like car, a car, passenger and car ferry, leaves here over to the island of Hoi and Florida. I think I stopped, there's far too much distraction. Well, let's have a look at them first. That's pulling into the side. You're not, you're not part of the gig. Oh, Jaguar. I've written a Lovely. We're, pu we're putting on a, a, quite a good show for you. Another one. That's a new one. Another Jaguar. Oh, I'm learning today. I think it must be rally day. Well, have they been all day? Ah, that could be. Could be. They came off the ferry from uh, Scrapster from strongness, quite possible. Right, back to Scapa Flow. On your left side, at the end of uh, World War I, November 1918, the entire German high seas fleet was captured, taken up here, anchored in Scapa Flow. They had to wait for the Treaty of Versailles to be negotiated. They had to wait what the outcome would be, what would happen with the German high seas fleet. 74 German warships, oh, another one. <laughs> wow. Another red one. Um, given command of the entire fleet was Rear Admiral Ludwig van Reuter. And he said at the time, he is a bit um, worried, concerned, that the Treaty of Versailles might involve the surrender of the German battleships. And he said, before I have to hand over these 74 valuable battleships to the Allies or uh, the British, I rather sink the fleet myself. Wow. And he arranged a secret code, paragraph 11, 
the British were unaware of that. That was a secret code amongst the German sailors. And then eight months later, in June, on the 21st of June exactly, 1919, Ludwig von Reuter gave command to paragraph 11. And he gave command to the sinking of the entire German high seas fleet. So they scuttled their own fleet. They sunk it. They opened the doors, the hatches. They damaged some parts in the engine compartment and managed to sink the ships quickly enough so the British couldn't come on board and stop them. The German sailors wanted to leave their ships. They didn't want to commit suicide. They only wanted to destroy their own fleet so that the British or the Allies can't benefit from it. And so it happened that one after another of these 74 warships capsized and sank. 22 of them were salvaged and beached by the British, but 52 sank. This was the largest loss of modern warship ever in history in a single afternoon. Seven of these German warships are still beneath the surface nowadays. The waste had been floated back up to the surface because there was huge interest to get the steel back up from the bottom of the sea because they discovered, once the ships were sunk, they discovered, hang on a second, all these German warships were constructed prior to any nuclear testing. So they were non-radioactive steel and they could repurpose it for medical equipment. So bit by bit, some ships were taken up, others were floated up, air was pumped into them, so they were floating back up again, and they were reused for <coughs> medical equipment and some other purposes. As I said, seven of them are still beneath the surface, and they form an attraction for divers. They come here from all over the world to dive down to these massive German battleships. The bottom of Scapa Flow is very sandy, and the tidal movement, oh, there's a big hair on our left side, Kish water. It's actually fresh water, but because of the sea washing water in there in a high tide twice a day, um, you have some mixed water, brackish water in there. And sometimes seals are swimming in there. And then they swim all the way around to your right, and they will come up at the standing stones of stones. The building on your right side, by the way, is also rather interesting because it's called the Golden Slipper. 